Okay, so we're kind of building off of the previous graphing that we did, uh, where we realized that if k was greater than zero, it would be in quadrant one and quadrant three, and and so on and so forth. So we're graph we're now graphing rational functions, um, and uh, we're going to start with something that we're familiar with. It's called the excluded value. Remember, it's taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero. So x cannot equal two. Okay? So there's your excluded value here x plus 8 can't be 0, so x cannot be equal to negative 8. Okay? Pretty straightforward. We take just the denominator. We don't care about anything else. We care about just the denominator. Exclude the value for that. Uh, yeah, negative 7. Okay, now, what that's going to help us with is something called an asymptote. Okay? Uh, if you notice on these graphs, they're going to keep getting closer and closer to a line but they're never going to cross it. Well, that line, what they're getting closer and closer to, is called an asymptote. A line is an asymptote of a graph if the graph gets closer to the line as x or y gets larger in absolute value. Okay. When the numerator and denominator of a rational function have no common factors other than one, there is a vertical asymptote at each excluded value. Okay. So the vertical asymptote would be the, the, the uh, excluded value. So in this case, it's going to be negative 2. And then we're going to graph it. We're going to plug in a whole bunch of numbers. And so here's the vertical asymptote. x plus 2 equals 0. So the vertical asymptote is negative 2. So we draw a dotted line. It's kind of like uh, the line of symmetry when we were talking about quad quadratics. We draw a dotted line. Uh, we plug in a whole bunch of numbers for x, a whole bunch for y. Be fair. Uh, whatever you do, positives, you should do negatives. We should recognize the difference between here. Um, this is where negative 2 would be. So we plug three numbers in on either side, and then we create our, our graph. Okay. So that is how a vertical asymptote works. Okay. So we're going to look at another one. No, wait. We're not. Apparently not. I think there's probably another practice in your book, but uh, I thought it was, I guess I thought it was pretty straightforward. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's another one. Negative 3 over x minus 6 um, would be one that you could practice. Uh, y is equal to negative 3 over x minus 6. If you wanted to work on graphing that one, um, you could. All right. Uh, now, it is also possible to have something called a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so here's a way that it could look. Y is equal to A over X minus B plus C. B, we've just found out, is the vertical asymptote. This plus C is now the horizontal. So if we start to move the graph around, you'll notice that in this one, it was a plus zero. So that's why the graph had an asymptote at zero it went straight across. The vertical was negative 2, but the horizontal was 0. Okay. So, I don't know why I keep putting that back. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so, for example, right here, our vertical asymptote would be, we want it to be a minus. Notice that this is a minus, so we change it into minus negative 4. So that makes the vertical asymptote at negative 4, and the horizontal would be positive 1. Okay. So what are the asymptotes of this? Well, the vertical would be 1. Okay, so the vertical asymptote would be x equals 1. And the horizontal asymptote would be y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so using that information, we create a table. Uh, we know that we don't want to plug in 1 for x because it won't work. And we know that negative 2 is going to be our, um, we're not going to ever get to negative 2 either. So we're going to pick numbers that kind of go around those things. So we pick these ones and then these ones. And then what we end up with is a graph that looks like this. So we have our horizontal asymptote at negative 2, our vertical asymptote at positive 1, and then we have the way that our graph looks 
both sides. Okay? So this is going to take some practice, in all honesty, um, because you're going to want to be able to recognize the asymptotes. You're going to want to be able to make a table, uh, and then from there, your graph. Okay. Um, okay, so word problem. Your dance club sponsors a contest at a local reception hall. Uh, reserving a private room costs three fifty, and the cost will be divided equally among the people who enter the contest. So depending on how many people, now they're also going to pay a $30 entry fee. So what equation gives the total cost? So the total cost is Y, and the number of people coming is X. So we're going to take 350 divided by X, add 30, and that's going to give us Y. So here is the equation. Y is equal to 350 over X plus 300, okay. plus 30, sorry. 350 over X is how much each person pays. So the more people, the less they pay, plus the $30. And this is going to be the total cost per person. Okay. Um, okay. Now we have to recognize one thing, that we can't have negative people, and they can't pay negative dollars. So when we would normally have a quadrant in one, a graph in quadrant one and quadrant three, we have a real world situation where it's not possible to have negatives, so therefore we're going to have quadrant number one. So what we recognize is, or what we can do, if, if you have it, and you know you don't have to use it, obviously you can do this by yourself, it's possible, um, it's not enjoyable, so it'll take some work, um, but we use a graphing calculator. We plug that in, uh, we can see from this graph that uh, the number of people who enter the contest as the number increases the amount of money that they pay decreases but there is a vertical asymptote uh, sorry a horizontal asymptote at 30 so it's never going to get cheaper than $30 it'll get towards 30 if 5,000 people come but it's never going to be less than thirty dollars okay so there's that concept okay approximately how many how many people must enter the contest in order for the total cost per person to be about fifty we plug it in or uh, if we've used a graphing calculator we trace it okay we find the trace function we go to where we we move along until we get to about y equals fifty okay and we find out that it's 18 people. The other method is to just plug it in. Okay, we have y is equal to 350 over x plus 30. We plug in 50 and we solve it. Oops. So 20x equals 350. So we divide both sides by 20 and we find our answer, whatever 350 divided by 20 is. You do the math. Okay? Look at number four there. Give it a try. Okay, I'm going to point out this to you, but I'm not going to show it to you. Page 709, family of functions, lots of different graph pictures, kind of a review of all the graphing that we've done up to this point. Check these out. Uh, okay, see you.